Last year when the pandemic began, it was common knowledge that the new coronavirus had natural origins and it came from bats via pangolin. And here it is. This is the pangolin we tracked down in China. The mysteries of COVID can be unlocked by our studies of this creature. Or some other animal. Now this was because previous coronaviruses such as SARS and MERS also came from bats via intermediary animals such as camels in the case of MERS and civet cats in the case of SARS. And the reputation of some Chinese indulging in exotic meats further strengthened the global opinion that the virus had natural origins. It has been more than one and a half years since the pandemic began. More than 80,000 samples from 30 species have been tested for the coronavirus. But the scientists still haven't discovered the mysterious pangolin or any other intermediary animal from which the virus could have jumped to humans. Therefore, lack of progress in the natural origins hypothesis and extraordinary efforts by a global organization of internet detectives, drastic, Investigative journalist Catherine Iben and science journalist Nicholas Wade has forced the world to relook into the possibility that the coronavirus might have indeed escaped from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. There are many evidences and credible hypotheses that force us to look into the possibility that the new virus might have indeed escaped from a lab in Wuhan. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is one among three places in the world where research on coronavirus was being conducted. The other two places are in USA. The Wuhan Institute conducted gain-of-function research on coronaviruses where it made the virus more susceptible to human cells so that vaccines can be created for them in advance. Therefore, the correlation between the city from where the pandemic started and the labs where the coronaviruses were being researched is very strong. It is often said that the Wuhan Institute of Virology has the highest biosafety level, BSL-4. Therefore, the probability of a virus escaping is very low. But contrary to the popular opinion, the Wuhan Institute has many labs with different biosafety levels. That is, BSL-1, BSL-2, BSL-3 and BSL-4. And guess at which level of safety research on coronavirus was being conducted? BSL-2. And the scientists doing research on coronavirus did not look like this as shown in popular media, but more like this. Therefore, significantly increasing the probability of a lab leak scenario. In 2012, six miners got sick while clearing bat poop in a copper mine in Mojiang in the Yunnan province. They had symptoms that of novel coronavirus, such as cough, fever, and difficulty in breathing. Three out of six miners died. To investigate the cause of death, Shi Zhengli, the head of coronavirus research at the Wuhan Institute, visited the mineshaft for three years and collected virus samples from bats. Shi's research on viruses from bats earned her the nickname, the Bat Lady. One of the virus samples collected from the Mojiang mine and stored at the Wuhan Institute had 96.2% similarity with the novel coronavirus. The recent videos also show that the Wuhan Institute also kept bats in its lab for research. Now you might ask, if those bats in Mojiang can directly infect humans, couldn't they have also flown to Wuhan and started the pandemic directly? No, they couldn't have because the flying range of a horseshoe bat is 50 kilometers and the distance between Wuhan and Mojiang is nearly 1,500. Therefore, the bats couldn't have flown from Mojiang to Wuhan and started the pandemic directly from there. Furthermore, it was winter when the pandemic began and the bats were in hibernation. Therefore, the possibility of bats flying from Mojiang to Wuhan can also be ruled out. The probability of a human visiting Mojiang mine and spreading it across China is also low because the mine has been closed since 2013 and the only scientists from Wuhan Institute visited. Later, it was also discovered that no bats were sold at the Wuhan wet market either. So the only way a virus could have traveled a distance of 1,500 kilometers without infecting almost everyone between Mojiang to Wuhan is only through a secure vehicle. And you already know who are the only people making regular trips from Mojiang to Wuhan since 2013. It is very rare for viruses to jump directly from bats to humans. A virus first usually infects an intermediary animal, like a camel or civet cat, as it was in the case with MERS and SARS, where it evolved itself before being able to infect humans. The genetic similarity between novel coronavirus and the bat virus found in the lab is 96% and not 100%. Therefore, it means that the bat virus should have spent a considerable amount of time in an animal before jumping onto humans. Genetic evolution takes a lot of time. The genetic difference of 4% between the virus sample found in Wuhan lab and the new coronavirus means that the virus should have spent approximately four decades evolving in an intermediary animal before infecting humans, said one scientist. So, the probability of the novel coronavirus jumping directly from bats to humans is low.
and because we still haven't discovered an intermediary animal therefore we have to look into the possibility that the virus might have leaked from the Wuhan Institute where it was being engineered to attack human cells. We now know that coronaviruses were being genetically modified at the Wuhan Institute in low security labs. But we still don't know if this particular coronavirus, the one that caused the pandemic, SARS-CoV-2, came from a lab or not, or it was genetically modified or not. On one hand, we have scientists saying that the new coronavirus does not have any signs of human intervention, and the lab leak hypothesis is a conspiracy theory. But it becomes hard to believe them when one of their most vocal scientists, Peter Daszak, was found directly funding the Wuhan Institute through its organization, EcoHealth Alliance. On the other hand, we have scientists who believe that even though the virus might have a natural origin, it would be unscientific to ignore the lab leak hypothesis. Apart from all the arguments I mentioned in this video, these scientists also say that there are techniques through which viruses can be genetically modified without leaving a trace of human intervention. Now, we don't know which side is right because modern sciences have become so complicated that it is nearly impossible for normal people like me and you to verify the claims of these scientists. Therefore, we have to rely on scientists themselves who verify each other's work in a process called peer review. But unfortunately, in this case, most scientists in the field of biology are silent. Why? Because they fear that if they speak up in favor of the lab leak hypothesis, the money to their research projects would be taken away. Now it can be easily found out if the virus came from a lab or not by simply analyzing the records of the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But the Chinese government is not too keen on sharing anything much. Instead, China is spreading disinformation in the world by saying that the virus first came from Spain and not China. Now there are two possible reasons why China is denying access to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. One reason might be that the virus might have indeed escaped from a Wuhan lab. And China fears that if it is found guilty of negligence, the world would force China to pay reparations for starting the pandemic. Just like the Allied powers forced Germany for starting World War I. The other reason might be that Chinese simply are secretive people and do not like foreigners interfering in their internal affairs. In my personal opinion, the Chinese might be hiding something at the Wuhan lab because why bother being so secretive and arousing global suspicion if the whole pandemic was a natural calamity and the Chinese government couldn't have done anything about it. Furthermore, in an excellent piece by investigative journalist Catherine Ivan, we know that initially the US was also hesitant to probe the lab leak theory because it itself was funding the Wuhan Institute indirectly through EcoHealth Alliance. But now the US has also started to look into the lab leak hypothesis seriously, albeit very late. With every passing day, the biological evidences for the origins of the virus are disappearing. And who knows, China might be tampering with the evidences at the Wuhan lab that could pin the responsibility of the pandemic onto them. Therefore, it is very important to look into the lab leak hypothesis as fast as we can. Because if the virus indeed came from a lab in Wuhan, then it was an avoidable mistake. And by studying how the coronavirus escaped from the Wuhan lab, we can avoid such leaks in the future. And even if the virus has natural origins, by exploring the lab leak theory fully will give humanity closure who has suffered so much in the past one year. And when humanity moves on, they will know doing so that they did everything in their power to find out what caused the pandemic. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming over to my vlog. This was the most difficult video I have made so far and I have wanted to add so much in this video but couldn't because of time constraints. Therefore, I am linking the articles by Catherine Ivan and Nicholas Wade down in the description so that you can read them. Mind you, those articles are really, really long, so take your time with them and I'll see you soon.